At the beginning, when ETA was created, it had a clear mandate to help the young nation to build its infrastructure, to build its industry. This mandate is still ongoing. ETA is one of the best technical universities in our countries. But of course, this mandate has been opened to a global scale. So ETA itself understands now as a global university and tries to make contributions to a global uh, welfare. So from the outset, ETA has put academic excellence as its top priority. We look for excellency and we do not make any compromises with that. On the other side, another unique feature of ETA is to have a culture of freedom and trust on the same time. So we offer a lot of freedom to our faculty members, to our students, we give them a lot of trust and we provide them of course with the means that they need to pursue their goals. Uh, I think the very reason why this is uh, possible still today is that uh, ETA lives the philosophy of a strict uh, bottom-up culture. And this is, in my opinion, this is very important and at least uh, uh, for my own personal career uh, made it highly attractive uh, to, to, join the, to join the ETA. Uh, because this bottom-up structure guarantees that uh, all the ideas and concepts uh, come from the scientists, that the scientists have to convince their, their peers, their colleagues, and that after that you almost can be sure to find, to find support, and, and, uh, which also means money, uh, from, the, from, the management, from the management. And uh, that is very important, not to handle uh, such, a, such a pool of ideas and, and inspiration, not to handle it uh, top-down. Our philosophy is to have a strong emphasis at the beginning of study in, in the basics, in mathematics and physics and chemistry. But later on, uh, in the master level, we introduced uh, the, the research in the education, that students early on are confronted with, with research projects to, to learn, to, to work on themselves, to have ideas, to problem solving uh, in, 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 uh, on real projects. You should have on the one hand the freedom to think about completely new concepts the world has never seen. On the other hand, you have only the possibility to do that if you are leading in the field. But to achieve a leadership in the field, you have do, you have to do a, a, what, what I would call a high frequency publication rate, uh, so, which means uh, you have to be visible in the field and the visibility today is, is, is publications. So on the one hand you should have time and freedom to think and not to publish too early and on the other hand you are forced to, uh, to be part of the race and, and, uh, and, and assure your, your, your position in the, um, in the, in the realm of, uh, of your scientific interest. Creating an environment in which excellent ideas can grow is a very, very difficult uh, problem. Positive feedback is very important. So, if you have brilliant faculty members, that attracts other brilliant faculty members. If you have excellent students, that attracts other excellent students. So I believe, once again, in having an environment where you have a group of people who really do outstanding things, make these things known, and this will create then a spiral, a positive feedback spiral that will attract even more of these people. So, it's very difficult to start once a system runs well, it's easier to keep it running. That's the main uh, secret behind our success. Switzerland, and especially ETA, might be a little bit unique because we still have kind of a, of a traditional funding system. Uh, so you won't have to run uh, just for the next uh, 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 granting proposal. Uh, because part of your job 
has a stable funding, which comes from tax money, of course. But this stable funding allows you to have a kind of a planning safety, for, which, is, which is certainly for two or three or, or four years. So in principle, you could really take your time and say, I reduce a little bit the size of my lab, and since I have a stable funding, I uh, go on with, uh, with some weird uh, uh, ideas uh, of, of, what I'm, of what I'm going to do. And I think, again, this is a balancing out between uh, f the basic funding and the money that you have to bring in uh, about the, uh, uh, based on the, on the, on the usual uh, granting organizations. Of course, our most important contribution are the alumni of our school. Over the last 160 years, we have graduated more than 100,000 people. We have given out more than 20,000 PhD degrees. This is, I consider, our most important contribution. Of course, beyond that, you can cite the usual suspects, our 21 Nobel laureates, our field medal winner, winners, our Turing Award winners. There are many, many of these individual outstanding contributions. And they are important. Ideas are important. But once again, I believe our most important contribution are the brilliant people that we educated here in this fantastic school. In the next 10 years, in the next 20 years, in the next, I hope, 100 years, ETA will build on its strengths, on its tradition, on its culture, and keep on doing what we believe is our mandate, our mission. That is, to educate excellent scientists, excellent engineers, and to contribute on a global scale to solving the very urgent question that humanity faces. Energy, food, water, climate, you name it, health. There are big issues that are, uh, need to be solved and ETIO clearly strives to make its contribution towards this quest.